What's up, Battletech fans? Today we're painting up Valton Rider's Bushwhacker from the cartoon series because I wanted to show you something fun and interesting, just a little outside the norm. As usual, all the materials you'll need will be in the video description, so let's get started. I started off with some Wraithbone spray, mainly to get the hue I wanted for the lower half of the miniature. I'm going to paint the top half in silver later, but this will help keep the warmer tone I want for the next step. I gave it my usual light dusting of Duplicolor Sandable White Auto Primer too, just in case. Your mileage may vary on that, but you can skip it if you want. I've detailed this process on here a few times, most recently with the Gen Con Irby. This is just my favorite process for doing areas that are meant to be all black. Sometimes you're just not going to be able to avoid painting with something like a bad and black, but when I have a color scheme that's heavy on the black, this is just what I like to do. The reason I like this method is because solid black is so unforgiving, and it takes a lot of highlighting to bring out the details once they've all been sucked into the event horizon of a black hole. With three coats of Nuln Oil, I find that a simple dry brushing is really all that's necessary because the shade hasn't absorbed all the details and leaves the whole thing with kind of a dark gunmetal sort of feel. So go for even coverage on each coat, but make sure you wait at least 45 minutes to an hour in between, or else you'll reactivate the previous coat. Then you wind up with a huge white spot somewhere on the miniature, and it'll typically be in a highly visible spot. That's just the way it goes. Ask me how I know. So, give it time. It's also a lot easier to see what I'm doing and make sure the color's going on evenly. Once you've got three solid coats of Nuln Oil on at full strength, give the lower half a slight dry brushing in P3's Bastion Gray. Start by adding only a small amount of paint to the bristles, wiping away most of it on a paper towel or a napkin. Once you give it a quick test to make sure not too much paint comes off on each pass, Use quick and even strokes and don't worry if you get some on the top half of the miniature. You want to focus on dry brushing all the parts, even the bits that are close to the arms, so you get complete coverage before you move on to the next step. Because this is a cartoon machine, I wanted to give it more of a cartoonish look, something off the wall and evocative of the time the show came out to set it apart on the battlefield. So I'm giving the miniature two thin coats of lead belcher over the entire top half. This is why you don't have to worry if you got any Nuln Oil or Bastion Grey on the underside of the torso or the arms. Once these coats are laid down, no one will notice, and because a contrast paint or a shade is going over top of all this, the details won't be muddled in the end. The only drawback to this step is that base coating by hand is tedious. The good news, though, is that it's easy and you don't have to worry so much about your hand shaking. Just try to be careful when you're doing the inner arms by the hips, but otherwise, accuracy or technique isn't as important here as getting full and even coverage. Just remember, thin your paints and work your way up to opacity. I'm also going to paint the calf area panels in lead belcher too, so when I do the green later on, I can add it down there and not have to do a lot of work to have the details show. One thing I love about painting this miniature is how perfectly partitioned all the sections of it are. The bottom is clearly defined from the top, and the arms each have a socket they connect to that I can easily distinguish from the main body. So I'm taking Drakenhof Nightshade and going at the arms with two coats of this at full strength. I won't lie, it's going to look funny at first, you just got to trust the process on this one because the end result won't. Just treat this the same way as you do the Null Oil. Give it time to dry in between coats and apply it in the exact same fashion. Except I only need two coats of this stuff because the first one doesn't look so dark, but after the second one, <laughs> you'll see what I mean. Two is enough. Once these are dry, I get out a small angled dry brush to apply Calidor Sky. Same story as before, make sure you're not getting too much coming off the bristles on each pass before you start applying the paint to the mini. You can always add more, but you can't take it away, so use this time to work your way up to the hue of blue that you want instead of worrying about it being done perfectly the first time. 
Quick moves with the brush are all that's required, but again, remember to be careful in the areas where the arms and legs almost meet. It's easy to get blue on those legs at this point, so take it slow in those spaces. But otherwise, feel free to be a little loose with it, as long as you're being mindful of where your brush is while you're doing it. Again, this is so easy because the torso is compartmentalized from everything else, so I can take a coat of Militarum Green and hit it at full strength without having to worry about anything. This stuff is more viscous than the shade though, so it'll pool easier if you're not careful. Just go for even coverage and use your brush to wick away any excess that pools up in places you'd rather it didn't. Just stick to the torso on this and you should be good, but leave out the missile pod. I'm going to leave that silver in the end because I don't like the idea of having something dark up there in with a color that's already dark. I'd avoid the front guns also if I were you. I'm going to make those metallic later. I also painted the calf areas as well because I wanted the same effect for those areas as I had for the torso, for consistency's sake. Anywho, this will need about an hour or so to dry before you move. I'm going to give this some depth and really emphasize the military green with a coat of Athonian camo shade at full strength. This is just a second verse same as the first sort of thing. The same application and other techniques as I used with the contrast paint are what I did here. So just enjoy this part of the process for how easy it is and take your time rather than going for speed. It's easy for someone to feel like a low level of difficulty needs to also equal speed, but it doesn't. Sometimes it's good to work your way through something slowly and you'll be more satisfied with the results in the end. I added a little extra blue to the lower half of the miniature here because I felt like that would help the lower half have a little more oomph. I went with a couple spots on the feet and the center torso mid panel because I figured less is more. You don't have to do this, it's just something I wanted to do to mine to add a little extra layer of depth to the whole thing at the end of the process. I'm going to give this a light, and I mean light, dry brushing in Warboss Green. I want even less than I normally do for a dry brush step. I just want enough of this stuff to glint off the sharp corners of the miniature to add a slight level of light, but not change the overall color. Finally, I'll use two thin coats of Wild Rider Red to do the orange bits on the missile pods. Again, this is all super easy because the two areas are just flat panels. Just do the outside edges of the torso mounted pod and the little square circle on the arm pod. I'm avoiding doing other metallics until dead last because it's easy to clean up if I get any of this in a spot where I don't want it. Shading with Fugan Orange is easy. Use a small brush and a minor amount of shade and apply it evenly to the orange spots and don't worry if you get some on the metallic areas. You can clean all that up before going to the final step without an issue, since the entire upper torso started as metallic. So here's where you'd use your lead belcher to clean up any areas you accidentally got color where you didn't want it. You can also add any additional metallics at this time, like I did with the hips. Once you're satisfied with that, go ahead and shade the metallic areas with a coat of null oil at full strength, as usual. It's refreshing to be able to save this bit for last when all the other details are locked in and all you have to do is some basic cleanup before you apply the shade. Just be careful when applying to get the shade where you want it rather than on any finished areas of the miniature. Fortunately, at this stage, the things I wanted metallic weren't really close to the other colors so as to be an issue. Hopefully it's the same for you. And we're done. The missile tips were done with Mephiston Red, the cockpit done with Uriel Yellow and Eandon Yellow, and the heat effects are a combination of Magos Purple and Talisar Blue contrast paint. The base is Agrellan Earth, shaded with Agaros Dunes Contrast and Agrax Earthshade, dry brushed with P3 Hammerfall Khaki. Other basing effects by Army Painter. If you like what we do here on the channel, do us a big favor and subscribe. Turn on all notifications so you know exactly where Battlebound's gonna turn up next. Thanks so much for watching, I'm Tuck Davian, and I'll see you next time right here, out on the Space Lane.
Be sure to smash our like button and subscribe to our channel. Crowdfunding is when lots of people give you small amounts of money to help your passion project come to life.